All right, so we're gonna continue on with our series about the DLED7NC, the full spectrum data light. It's a fine point focusing light source. There's other videos that I've done about this so that you can get some generalizations about it, get an overview, see it with optics. So what we're gonna do today is something that I think is really important because a lot of you who are gonna shop for the full spectrum light are gonna to say to yourselves, well, if I get this, why do I need to have a bicolor light? Maybe I should just forego the bicolor light and just get the full spectrum light and call it a day. I think we're going to look at this and you're, you may think differently about it after you see a side by side and we do a little comparison here. And it really boils down to three simple things. Shadow qualities, output in the most used spectrums of light, and beam focusing range. So if those things are important to you, which I assume they are, then you may want to consider keeping a bicolor light in your arsenal. So let's take a look at them side by side and get some readings and see where they really differ. All right, so I'm going to turn on the full spectrum light here. I use the Chromalink app to control the light. It's just a lot easier. Look at some of the other videos and you'll see why. We're set at 5600 and we're gonna go between 3200 and 5600, the most used in the white light range, just because generally speaking, it gives you a really good idea of what you're looking at, and it gives you kind of a really normalized data point to look at and say, okay, I get it. I can compare that against everything else. So we're set at 5600. We're gonna do that because in this light, there is no white diodes. There's six channels, red, green, blue, cyan, amber, and lime. And those are being blended to make white light. So we really want to see what shadow qualities look like from that because if we're getting dirty shadows, then we may want to consider using a white light for those ranges of light. So I'm 10 foot from the wall. And if I get an object up close to this light, you can see where six channel lights kind of, you know, show themselves a little bit more, which is in the outline of shadows. You'll see that there are some spectral shifting that's going on, a little bit of rainbows. And this is where, if this is important to you, casting a shadow um, and being a little closer to the light, if that is something important to you, then this may not be the setting that you want to do. A reading here is going to give us about 20 foot candles in the center of the beam. And then we're going to narrow that down to its tightest spot, which is 15 degrees. So from 50 to 15 degrees. It's important that I reiterate why this light is special and different from other six channel lights. It's because it's actually a fine point focusing light, full spectrum focusing light. It's something to keep in mind. Okay, so again, I'm going to look at the reading from 10 feet in full spot, and I have 62 foot candles. So a nice optical range there. And we're going to do the same thing at 3200. And the nice thing about the full spectrum light is that it really retains a ton of punch. The saturation levels are huge in this six channel light. And so I'm getting basically the same reading at 3200 that I am in 5600. Sixty-four foot candles. So maybe even a, a drop higher. I'd say that's pretty much the same based on this old school light meter. Okay, the only way to be fair about testing these lights is to keep the full spectrum light in daylight and tungsten values, right? That's the only way that we're gonna be able to compare it against the light that we use 90% of the time, which is bicolor light, anywhere between you know, 2700 and 6600, which is what the DLE 7 and by does. That is all dedicated tungsten and daylight diodes between that range. And when you're using that 90% of the time on set, it just makes sense to take a look at this and see why you may want this alongside the full spectrum light. So let's bring this up at 5600 as well. All right. Now immediately we're going to see maybe it's going to be a little bit fuller on the focusing range, so a little bit wider and narrower. But we're full up right now at 5600. We're the same range, 10 foot that we tested the full color light from, so let's get a reading here and look at some shadow qualities. Again, up close to the light, we're not seeing any of the spectral shifting going on. No fringing. This is much cleaner. This is what you would expect more from a bicolor or monocolor light. If that is important to you, then you do want to have a more powerful bicolor light in your arsenal. 
And as I get closer, of course, that's gonna get sharper and crisper. I'm gonna take a reading here and I have 32 foot candles from 10 feet. I believe that's roughly double that of the full spectrum light. And then I'm going to narrow it down to what is eight degrees on the spot side for a ditto light. Again, if you've never used a ditto light before, that's what they do well. We use optics to make focusing mechanisms that give you a lot of optical range. So eight degrees full spot, 15 degrees full spot, you're gonna get more intensity just out of the fact that you can narrow down the beam by double. And let's take a look at what the output is here. 10 foot at 5,600, we have 185 foot candles. So that's nearly three times, I believe, the output. We're also gonna put that at 3,200 as we did previously with the full spectrum light. So here we are and get another reading. hundred and fifty five foot candles so if white light is important to you and having punch is important to you you're going to want to still have a bicolor light on set and because they're the same size same scale of course you can build kits with these interchangeably you know throwing one into a, a slot in a kit that's built for the same size light not a big deal the final thing we're gonna just look at here is, is one of the more obvious things, which is using barn doors on both of these lights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn them both on at 5600, and then we're going to set the, go full up here on the, both lights. We're gonna offset them so you can actually see the full spots side by side, and then I'm going to put a barn door on both of the lights, and I'm gonna put just, it's just like a little rectangular shape that I'm cutting out of it. The most obvious and used accessory to cut light without gripping. And I'm gonna flood these lights out. And see the difference here. Spectral anomalies going on around the outside edges of each door. That is to be expected from a six channel light. Here on the bicolor side, you're seeing what you would expect or hope to see from using a barn door. Beautiful drop off, the shape is really nice, everything is even except when it gets to the drop off, and that would be something you would probably want to use if you're trying to cut with barn doors or grip up close to the light. There is another barn door that we use. You've seen it in other videos. So let's take a look at the wide angle lens adapter, the Delwar. Now the Delwar, again, widens the beam out and extends the light ratio from 50 degrees in full flood out to 90 degrees in full flood. And it also gives you the ability to use dynamic barn doors that rotate. So you can make a trapezoidal shape to light from an angle and cut a square, let's say, for example. So I'm at full flood on both of these lights. And magically, we're just going to cut a couple of light beams here, side by side, to take a look at the shadow qualities of both of those lights. And you can see, again, we have some spectral stuff going on in the outside edges of the full spectrum light, but it looks pretty Good. If you're going to use barn doors and you're going to use the six channel DLED 7NC, I would definitely use the wide angle lens adapter with some barn doors to cut some pretty cool shapes and feel good about the drop off. It's also going to be a tighter drop off. They're larger barn doors further away from the light. So the drop off is going to be less, more shallow than using standard barn doors. But over here on the bicolor side, obviously we have really crisp, homogeneous, beautiful light. In the drop off, it's the same what you would expect to see. So it's just, it's tighter, cleaner, and also double the output. So to wrap it up, I'd say that having obviously both of these lights in your arsenal would be my choice. I would want at any given point to be able to use the punchiness of the spy color light to get the most used spectrums on set, 90% of the time using that, that's what I would want. And then I would want this full spectrum multicolor light to do stuff 
like this because it does a billion other things that a bicolor light can't do well, that. So it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. They're wonderful siblings that actually get along, so I would bring them everywhere together. That's what I would do. So that's my recommendation. I would probably set them both up and get as much flexibility as you can creatively on set.